We are now set for the fight that will crown Bellator's first ever female world champion, the final of Bellator's women's 115 pound tournament, Zoila Frosto versus Megumi Fuji. Megumi Fuji, what can you say about someone who is 22 and 0 in MMA but unstoppable? Zoila Frosto says, I'm here to make history. Let's see if she can do it. Zoila warrior Princess Frosto stands poised on the edge of greatness, but from the vantage point of an underdog as she stares across the cage at the greatest female fighter in the world. It's a position that Zoila is familiar with. I came to this tournament, you know, as the underdog. I, I, I made my way through by knocking out Rosie Sexton, and um, I got past the first round, the second round, and, and now here I am. You know, I'm at the finals, and again, I'm the underdog. A lot of people expect me to lose, but that's fine. You know, no pressure on me. I go in there and do what I do best, and I take home my belt. At Bellator 23, Zoila would deliver one of the year's most shocking upsets, knocking out the top-ranked and heavily favored Rosie Sexton to win her spot in the women's 115-pound tournament. It was the best feeling by far in my MMA career. To be able to pull off a win like that, um, you, you can't, you just can't measure that to anything else that you do in, in, in life. After beginning her career at 135 pounds, the challenge would be for Zoila to drop a significant amount of weight and still fight at her fullest capacity. I had to drop 32 pounds in a little over three weeks. Uh, being a woman, it's not that it's not that easy, and um, my body did not agree with that. While the weight cut would be difficult, it would not stop Zoila in the quarterfinals as she dominated previously undefeated Jessica Penny. However, in the semifinals, Zoila had difficulty making weight, which had her considering a somewhat drastic decision. I was prepared to do whatever whatever I had to, to to get that weight off. I knew I had nothing left, so I was prepared to just, you know, chop my hair off. It wasn't just that, but I was like, I was seriously going crazy. After finally making weight, Zoila battled tooth and nail with Jessica Aguilar to win a very close decision. Oh, good right hand. Returning home after that fight, she went right back to the gym and focused on the next and toughest challenge. I barely squeaked out of that fight, but I do believe I won. For this fight, I've prepared myself 100%, and I've been able to keep my weight down, so I feel a lot more confident. Now facing undefeated Megumi Fujii, Zoila is on a mission not just to capture the world title, but also to solidify her legacy in the sport and prove she's never to be counted out. The saying goes, to be the best, you have to beat the best, and that's what I plan on doing tonight. This is her time. Megumi Fujii, the greatest pound-for-pound -pound female mixed martial artist in the world. Undefeated, 22 victories, 18 submissions, the most dominant fighter in the world, male or female. I fight by learning to overcome my weaknesses. When other little girls her age were playing with dolls, Megumi was learning the ropes from her father, who was her personal judo sensei. It was just what we did in my family. My father started to teach me my techniques at a very young age. Now the Japanese sensation looks to add the Bellator World Championship to her resume. But in order for her to gain the title, she must get past the larger, more powerful Zoila Warrior Princess Frosto. I'm not scared of her striking. I'm scared of her physical strength. I know Zoila is physically bigger than me, so I need to think about how to control those differences. Not only does Fuji -E want to bring the Bellator World Championship back to Japan for herself, but for all of those that have supported her in her lifelong pursuit of combat sports supremacy. Becoming champion would be one of the biggest points in my career. If I win, I can finally pay back my family and friends who have supported me throughout the years. With her sights firmly set on capturing the title, Fuji wants to use her time in the spotlight to inspire other girls with the hunger to compete. I want to create a path for all the younger generations of female fighters. This is her time. Tonight, Megumi Fujii looks to solidify her legacy as the greatest female fighter on the planet against the most dangerous striker in the division. As confident as she is dominant, Mega Magoo plans on doing what she always does, win. I fight like every fight is my last. I'm going to give it everything I've got. 
Jimmy, let's take a look at your inner circle. Uh, the past is the past. Say, say what you want about her poor performance against Jessica Aguilar. Zoila Frosto is in the finals and, and is coming in with a lot of confidence. She has put the semifinals behind her and is ready to make history. Fuji E will stalk Frosto. Jessica Aguilar won the kickboxing battle against Zoila Frosto by staying in her face. Fuji E and Josh Barnett have been working on that kind of up close, in your face style. She needs to implement it in order to be successful. The big question can Zoila stay off the ground? This is key. Zoila has shown excellent takedown defense, but Fuji E showed her ground dominance against the very well-rounded Lisa Ward. Zoila has to stay on her feet to have a chance here. From Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Bellator Fighting Championships along with FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros and Everlast. What do you fight for? Tonight here at Bellator 34, now present five five-minute rounds for the women's 115-pound Bellator World Championship. And now introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. She wears the black and pink at five foot five, weighing in at 114 and one half pounds. With two decision victories in the tournament, the Taekwondo black belt and Muay Thai striker stands with nine wins, a single defeat with one victory by knockout, two of those victories by submission. Representing Team JG MMA from Madera, California, now fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio, Tournament finalist Zoila, Warrior Princess Frosto. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the blue corner. She wears the white and pink at five foot three, weighing in at 113 and one half pounds, with two tournament submissions, both by way of armbar. Tonight, the catch wrestler with a background in sambo, judo, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu brings an unheard of, undefeated professional record of 22 and 0, with one victory by knockout, 18 by way of submission. Representing Team AACC, she is. Pound for pound, the world's best female fighter from Okayama, Japan, tournament finalist, Megumi, Mega Megu Fuji. And the referee for this contest, Frank Gentile. Okay, this is a world title fight. I expect you guys to listen to my commands. Okay, keep it clean. Are there any questions over here? Any questions here? Let's just touch them up and do it. Tonight's two Bellator world title fights are under the unified rules of combat. They are scheduled for five five-minute rounds. Elbows to the head are allowed, both standing and on the ground, and there is no kicking or kneeing the head of a grounded opponent. This, the final of Bellator's women's 115-pound tournament. The winner will become Bellator's first-ever women's MMA champion, the Bell in round number one. Zoila Frosto is in the black and pink. Megumi Fuji E is in the white and pink. Frank Gentile is the referee. Zoila squatting so low. You see her stance, about as low as she can get and still throw strikes. She's thinking takedown defense from the start. A kick by Fuji E. Definitely blocked by Zoila Frosto, who began Taekwondo at the age of 11. Fuji E began judo at the age of three. Holds the rank of black belts, both judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Fuji 36, Jimmy did not start in this sport until she was 30 years old. Oh, I like the way she's angling, trying to come in, throw that left hand. Zoila said, I like that she's a southpaw, lets me throw my right hand right down the pipe. Frosto, 10 years younger than her opponent, age 26, has been training in mixed martial arts for four years. That's funny, Megumi has her against the cage, you see here, but not trying to come in and clinch and get the takedown yet. It's a little bit surprising. She wants to stay outside and bang a little bit. One of the problems she had against Jessica Aguilar, Aguilar is that Zoila Frost will get, you know, falls in love with that right hand. You see her throw it all the time. It's easy to see. She doesn't set it up very much with her lead hand. She needs to do that if it's going to be successful. She has to mix it up. Just that right hand by itself, it's just too slow. It's too easy to see. Flipping right hand on the inside by Frosto. Joyla Frosto was very clear and definitive in our fighter meeting with her two nights ago. She said, I want to keep this fight standing. If I find myself on the ground, I'm going to try to do my best to power up and get back to my feet. Body kick by Frosto. And she throws a lot of power shots, but 
Nagini's defense right now holding up. Oh, good right hand. I'm sorry, left hand. It was the left hand. Frosto down and right back up. Fuji E did not pounce. That's surprising. Not used to the southpaws. That power shot is the left hand. Fuji E now trying to close. I, this was the pressure I was talking about. All Josh Barnett and Fuji E talked about in our fighting, fighter meeting was staying in her face, not letting her off the hook, just like Jessica Aguilar did. Zoila Frosto normally walks around at between 145 and 150 pounds. Megumi Fuji E walks around at about 118 pounds. Even for, you know, for a man, that's a ridiculous weight cut. And for women, it's so much harder to cut that weight. You know, the, the, the water stored in the muscle tissue, men have 33% more muscle tissue on average, and so much easier for them to lose weight, and that's a big weight cut for a dude. You see here, Frostle throws that. She throws the right, she throws the kick, but she doesn't have a wide variety of strikes. She, she really loves that power shot. Eugene missing with that kick. So far, all stand up. In Fuji, 22 fights in pro MMA, 22 wins, 18 of those victories either by submission or technical submission. Another good short left hand by Fuji. You hear George, George Gergel saying power punches and to disagree with him it's she's throwing a lot of power punches but fuji e is seeing all of them she's just not setting it up effectively straight left hand by fuji outside kick by megumi fuji frosto missing with that right hand as she stepped forward another point is it's very tiring throwing that right hand over and over just with the head kick by Zoila Frosto. Final minute of round number one. She those little angles by Megumi Fujii. She does that really well. She moves left and right very quickly. Little bounce in her step makes her a hard target. Not moving her head quite enough, but you see, she can see those right hands coming. Again, Frosto missing with that big right hand. Frosto very pleased that since defeating in the semifinal round of this women's 115-pound tournament for Bellator, Jessica Aguilar on September 30th, her weight did not get above 125 pounds. Big head kicked in the right hand, and Frosto steps forward. Fuji e might be hurt. She is backing up. I don't know if she'll have time to finish her. We'll have to see. She's a big Just a huge upset at the end of that first round. Started with this head kick, bang. And then Zoila Frosto all over Megumi Fuji E moving backwards. And you see the physical dominance of Zoila Frosto once she gets in range, throwing all kinds of strikes. Man, Megumi was lucky to get out of that first round. Round number two, again, scheduled for five five minute rounds. This, the championship bout of Bellator's inaugural women's tournament contested at 115 pounds. The winner will be Bellator's women's world champion at 115 pounds. Jimmy, let's take a look at your scorecard. Uh, she took the last 30 seconds. I don't think it was enough to win back the fight, in my opinion. I give it 10-9, Fuji E. I thought she controlled the entire fight. I thought she landed that, um, the entire round. I thought she landed that left hand very effectively, did more damage. Frosto just won that last 30 seconds. But hey, it's easy to steal rounds, so let's see if the judges agree. Zoila Frosto is in the black and pink. Megumi Fuji -E is in the white and pink. It, it's very important right now. The big question is how much was Fuji -E hurt? How much did she get back? The great heavyweight, Josh Barnett, former UFC heavyweight champion, the trainer, the coach of Megumi Fuji -E between rounds one and two. Jimmy, he told his fighter no more low kicks. You see here the Fuji going back to what she was doing in that first round, keeping pressure on Frosto and angling. And Frosto, I think, realizes that kick is going to be more effective than the hands. That right hand just hasn't really landed effectively. Lead rights are hard to use, even against a southpaw. 
Got to set it up with that lead hook. Throw some feints, throw something else to get Fuji off her game. One problem, uh, one thing I'm seeing that I don't like from Fuji is she has her hands very low, kind of sticking her chin out. Zoya Foster told us that she believed coming to this fight that Megumi Fuji had never really been punched hard in MMA. She's now been kicked hard in MMA. Certainly been kicked hard. Now what's surprising here, things like that, she's catching that kick but not going in for the takedown. Seems content to stand and bang. Straight left hand by Fuji. Foster just missing with that right hand as she stepped in. Against Jessica Penne, she used a lot of dirty boxing. She doesn't seem to want to get that close to Fuji E. Doesn't want to get in there with a judo black belt and tie her up. Fighters moving side to side. Frosto, as she did for much of round number one here in round number two, fighting with her back just against the Bellator cage fence. But Fuji E seems content to stand and kickbox. Not shooting in even though Fosso's back is against the cage. Push left hand there by Fuji. I think they might be saving those take takedowns for the third round into the deep water when she gets a little more tired, then spend some energy looking for the takedown. Jessica Penne went for a lot of clinches and takedowns and her fight against Oyla Frosto was not successful, burned a lot of energy. Frosto just missing with the overhand left. Fuji is slowly trying to walk down Frosto. Looks like the plan is to spend at least the first couple rounds kickboxing for Fuji E. No Frosto wants to get off of that right hand, get off of that head kick. Tried to throw the right there, couldn't do so. Frosto. We saw against Jessica Aguilar doesn't wear damage that well. We can see here her face is swollen, lips are bleeding. Can't tell if the nose is bleeding from here, but she, you know, she shows damage. The right hand by Zoila Frosto. You know, you see in boxing, certain fighters swell up and bleed easily. And it's hard for the judges not to take that into consideration. Final minute of round number two. See Zoila steps out a little bit, but then is content to keep this position with her back to the fence. Fuji just missing with the left. Not a kick by Frosto, partially caught by Fuji. We'll see if Frosto tries to explode with her strikes at the end of round two as she did Jimmy at the end of round number one. Yeah, trying to steal the last 30 seconds of the round, 20 seconds left. A little kick by Frosto. I'm surprised Fuji doesn't mix it up. Maybe look for a takedown to try and ice the end of the round, but wants to kickbox. Round number two coming to a close. We will go to round number three. Let's go, let's go. Sugoi, maybe John. A look up to the corner of Megumi Fuji with her trainer and coach, Josh Barnett. Stay back to the corner. Zoila Frosto also has an outstanding trainer and coach. Her boyfriend as well, right here, right here. George Gurgel, UFC and Strike Force veteran. A lot of talent in the two corners, a lot of talent in the cage right now. A Round number three. Josh Barnett said in between rounds she throws two and then she stops. I agree, she's not throwing a lot of combinations, not a lot of punches and bunches. It's pretty much that one, two. The winner will be crowned Bellator's inaugural female MMA champion. This contested at 115 pounds. Zoila Frosto is in the black and pink. Megumi Fuji is in the white and pink. Jimmy, as always, you have the unofficial scorecard. Well, I have it two rounds to none. I gave that last round 10-9 to Megumi Fuji. 20 to 18 so far. Seventh time in Zoila Frosto's pro MMA career that she has gone past two rounds. This is her 11th pro MMA fight. The 23rd pro MMA fight for Megumi Fuji. Jimmy, just the third time that she has gone past two rounds. That is amazing considering how many times she has fought. Good job, good job. 
But you know, with Josh Barnett, I don't think conditioning is going to be an issue. About 85% of this fight has been contested in this area. That portion of the cage, Frosto with her back against the Bellator cage fence, moving side to side, BGE trying to slowly walk down her bigger opponent. A problem Zoila might have is that if this goes the distance, a big criteria in the judging is cage generalship, ring control, who's dictating where the fight goes. And she's had her back to the fence this entire fight. Fuji-E looks like the aggressor. I think she's been a little more accurate and done a little more damage as well, but even if it were equal, Fuji-E looks like the one who's pushing Zoila around, or at least deciding where the fight goes, and that is so important. Frosto said to us in her fighter meeting, quote, I have to knock out Fuji-E to win. She just for some reason did not think that if it went all five rounds in 25 minutes that she would get the favorable end of the decision. That's a strange comment because against Jesse Aguilar, she certainly did. Coming up after this fight, our second world title fight of the night here at Bellator 34. This for Bellator's 185-pound world title, Alexander Shlomenko versus the champion Hector Lombard. Crowd starting to get a little restless here. I think just about everyone is surprised. Oh, good right hand. Now it's Fuji-E up against the cage. The left arm, Megumi Fuji-E is starting to close. And Frosto letting go with some big right hands. But this time, left. this time, plenty of time left in the round. Two minutes. Frosto just missing with that head kick. And Fuji not going in for a takedown. Content to stand here. I have no idea why. It looks like Frosto would be right for a takedown, but Fuji-E not going for that. Now it's Zoila Frosto trying to walk down Megumi Fuji. Frosto landing with the left. Frosto missing with that step in right. And you think we'd see, and that's a bad habit Fuji he had, Fuji he has is reaching for that leg kick. Haymaker right by Frosto just missed over the top. She throws that right hand to me with some very bad intentions. She certainly does. I'm just amazed that even when Frosto's coming in, Throwing punches, Fuji -E doesn't change her level and go for a takedown. That's where she has the advantage, is on the ground. Frosto missing with that low kick. Fuji -E stepping forward with the combination. And again, it's Zoila Frosto not walking down her smaller opponent, not fighting in the center of the Bellator cage, but essentially with her back against the Bellator cage fence. Now stepping out a little forward. I think she's worried about the takedown, but she does well when she moves in just like this. And yet she's not doing it very often, but she is pouring it on now. Fuji is taking trade. a lot of damage. This is what Fuji cannot do. She cannot trade punches with Zoila Frosto. Frosto is just too big, too strong. Frosto clearly has the heavier hands. And that is a bad mouse under the left eye of Megumi Fuji. -E. Now Fuji showing the damage from this round. Zoila Frosto making a big statement in this round number three. And we are headed to round number four. Hey! Frosto being much more aggressive in that third round, backing up Fuji E, throwing that right hand with abandon. You see here, overhand lefts. Fuji E on her heels, moving backwards. When she's Second able down. to use her physical gifts, when she's able to use her strength, when she's able to get Fuji go, moving guys, backwards, she does very, very well. Heading into round number four. One of these two fighters will emerge from this bout is Bellator's first ever female champion. This, the final of Bellator's women's 115 pound tournament. Here is round number four, the first time either fighter has gone past three rounds in their respective MMA careers. Jimmy, on your unofficial scorecard. Well, I gave that last round to Zoila Frausto, 29-28 Fuji E so far. Zoila Frausto is in the black and pink, Megumi Fuji E is in the white and pink. 
virtually all stand up thus far in this bout. Jimmy, are you surprised the wear into round number four? I'm surprised by a lot of the aspects of this fight. I'm not surprised we're in the deep water. I'm not surprised we're late into this fight. What has surprised me is Fuji E has been totally disinterested in the takedown. That has surprised me. She's engaged in a kickboxing battle with a very hard puncher. I thought she would maybe do it for a round or two. Throw Frosto off and maybe then go for the takedown, but she seems content to kickbox. That is really surprising me. Sharp left hand there by Frosto. Fuji trying to get off with her left, and a missed right to the body by Zoila Frosto. You know, we heard Barnett say, this is, a, this is a kickboxing match. You need to take her down. So far, she's going back to the same. I think Barnett's seeing what we're seeing, that, hey, when she gets moving forward and using those those hard punches and Magoonies backpedaling, it's very, very dangerous. Why play this game if you don't have to? And yeah, Frost has been very hard to take down, but gotta give it a shot, gotta see if you can mix it up. Fuji again trying to establish the left hand. Haymaker right hand misses by Frosto. What's important to keep in mind is Jessica Aguilar on my scorecard won a kickboxing match with Zoila Frosto two out of three rounds and lost a lopsided split decision. So you can't trust that things are going to work out your way if this goes five rounds. Especially all on the feet. Where it's been closely contested. Fuji missing with that left. She gets on top, works some ground and pound. She can maybe put some rounds in the bank, but right now she is not doing that. That's shocking to me. And once again, hands going down, looking for that kick. Another low kick by Frosto. You can see low, low, high. That's what a good kickboxer does. Good left hand. The left and the right to follow just missed. Another low kick by Frosto, that found the mark. Fuji's, Fuji's angling seems to fall apart when she's under attack. She does well when she's attacking, she angles well. But when Frosto moves forward, Fuji E goes straight back with her hands down. Her angling just seems to fall apart when she's under attack. Step in left again by Megumi Fuji. -E. I think Fuji -E has won the majority of this round though. Now finally a clinch. The clinch will the takedown follow. Crowd is cheering. They know how good Fuji E is from the clinch with her judo, with her groundwork. Knees by Megumi Fuji E. Knees to the midsection. Frost are so strong. We saw her basically throw Jessica Penny around in this position. Now Fuji -E kneeing the inside of the thigh and a knee to the stomach. She has a double underhook at body lock. Being very patient here, not really trying any inside or outside trips. Not going for any throws yet. But now Frosto has that underhook. I think she's strong enough to pull out of this position. And again, Fujini's first sport, first combat sport was judo. So she has more trips and throws than conventional takedown. A ton. I need nice to lead ahead, another lead. That second knee went right into the left eye of Zoila Frosto. Final minute of round four. Body lock held by Fuji. Now let her hands go. Frosto putting a lot of pressure on Fuji E here. And she's throwing, but she's not throwing a whole lot. This is where Fuji E took down Lisa Ward last time. Up against the cage in the clinch. Now Frosto able to pull out of the throw. Fuji went for the head and arm throw, could not get it. circling to her right. Dying seconds of round number four. And we will head to a fifth and final round. We are heading into our fifth and final round. The winner will become Bellator's female champion at 115 pounds. Zoila Frost.
Frosto is in the black and pink. Megumi Fuji is in the white and pink. Round five. Come on, come on, come on. Fuji E speaks no English. <laughs> the referee saying, come up and touch gloves. She does not know what he's talking about. She speaks very little English. Now, in between rounds, George Gurgel said something that, you know, I agreed with half of what he said. He said, move forward and touch her. Uh, he said, move forward and touch her. Stop loading up that right hand. I totally agree with that. He said, move forward. You're doing that very well. I agree with that. But he said, you've won all four rounds. I disagree with that. My scorecard says three rounds to one. I only gave Zola Frost that third round. Yes, the rounds have been very close, but she can't go out thinking she has an insurmountable lead right now. She cannot do that. Two, one or two rounds could have gone either way, but to think that she has an insurmountable lead is a big mistake. I think both fighters think, I think they need to win this round in order to be secure here. Round number five is a great and a rare thing in MMA. And how rare is a round number five in women's MMA? I would say it separates the men from the boys, but that makes no sense here in this context. The girls from the women, I guess. And neither fighter has ever gone past three rounds in their pro MMA career. The story of the stand-up has been Fuji E's been a little bit more accurate, landing that left hand. She's been more aggressive. She's kept Zoila against the fence, but Zoila has done well in flurries. She's done well landing big shots and following up. She hasn't been consistently successful. That's why I've given uh, Fuji E three out of four rounds, but some judges like power more so it, it depends on how the judges see it i would not say this is in the books for anybody virtually all stand up in this bout round number four fuji going for a head and arm throw and frost are just simply powering out fuji E's cut looks like over i would say the left eye it's hard to tell it's, it's obscured a little bit by her hair from our vantage point there's definitely some blood running down her face on the left side gotta be from those right hands you see Zola trying to time that left hook when Fuji E comes in. Fuji E definitely has a bad mouse under her left eye. Frosto is cut in her lips. Straight right hand by Zola Frosto. And Fuji E just having no success with that takedown. Nice left hand by Fuji as she stepped forward. Good body shot by Frosto in return. Missing with the left to the body. You know, Foster doing what she has done all five rounds. I think she's finding that maybe a little bit more success in those later rounds as Fuji is slowing down. She can't read the punches. Now some to the left eye of Zoila Frosto starting to look a little worse now here in round five. Fuji E doesn't keep her hands very high. She relies on her ability to read punches and move her head. And as you get tired, that gets harder to do. And both these ladies are battered to death. Neither fighter's left eye looks particularly good here in this fifth and final round. Fuji going for the single leg. And Frosto just fighting that takedown so hard. Looking at the time, only a minute 15 left. Fuji going over the top with the left hand. We've seen it over and over, Sean. Fifth round, third round, the final round of any fight. The one who thinks they're ahead a lot of time takes their foot off the gas. The one who doesn't fights with a sense of urgency. I'm not saying she thinks she's behind, but it looks like Fuji E fighting with a little more sense of urgency, even though I have her head on my scorecard. Well, now into the 25th and final minute of this fight. A lot of blood from the lips of Zoya Frosto. And finally there's with the, the takedown. Take this crowd going ballistic, but 30 seconds left. Yeah, she's outclassed on the ground, but she knows enough to hold a tight guard and wait for the bell. Tight, low guard indeed held by Zoila Frosto. Remember, Frosto told us in our fighter meeting, she thought that her only way to win was by knockout. 
There will not be a knockout. There will not be a submission. This fight will be determined by the three State of Florida judges' scorecards. It's up to them now. We've got to see what happens. One very big question now looms large here at Bellator 34. Who will be Bellator's first female champion, Zoila Frosto or Megumi Fuji? Jimmy, on your unofficial scorecard. Uh, I have it four rounds to one for Zoila Frosto, but a lot of those rounds could have gone either way. I would not want to be a judge in this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Judge Hector Gomez scores the fight 48 to 47, seeing the fight for Frosto. Your second judge, John Rupert, scores the bout 48 to 47, seeing the fight for Fuji. Your third and final judge, Rich Green, scores the bout 49 to 46 for the winner by split decision. And now the new women's 115 pound Bellator World Champion, Zoila Warrior Princess Frosto. Just tell me how you feel right now. It's the best feeling in the world. A lot of people said I couldn't do it, and I've been through so much. I deserve this spot. I worked so hard, and I got the Lord to thank. Bjorn, she's what Bellator is all about. You like taking fighters, making them warriors, making them champions. She went down that road. Zoila, you are everything Bellator is all about. We gave a world-class fighter an opportunity, and you won our world title. Congratulations. Spectacular performance. Megumi, Megumi Fuji E, the greatest streak in the history of, mar of mixed martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, give her a hand. 22 victories in a row. A very hard fight tonight. I know you must be disappointed, but tell you, tell me how you feel. Tell me how you thought the fight went. <laughs> I wanted to fight in her area, so I did a lot, uh, a lot more striking, but I did my best. Uh, you may be a fighter from Japan coming in here to the United States to fight, but I know you have a home here with this Florida crowd. They were behind you from start to finish. You've earned everyone's respect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fuji. We'll see you again. Thank you. With that victory, Zoila Frosto wins Bellator's women's 115-pound tournament and becomes Bellator's first-ever female world champion.